where we want to start with this is talking about baselines. And this is where we left off. You guys remember us talking about pencil and brush tool and pen tool last time? You guys remember about that? We sort of introduced just a couple of the tools. We're going to expand this tool set here. So what I'm going to do is create a new artboard. And let me just show you how to do that if this is something that you want to do. Um, I'm going to zoom out all the way first so you guys can see that this piece of paper exists in space. Do you guys see this whole like in slightly darker gray square in there? That is your um, art space. Uh, so I can't create anything outside of this space, but I can create anything that sort of fits in it. So it won't let me like move things too far outside of this artboard space. It'll like give me an error, I think. I think. Goodness. Maybe not. Maybe they change that. There we go. So it's sort of like, hey, you can't do that. Your stuff's going to fall off the side of the drawing area. So just keeping stuff inside of this gray space, which is perfectly fine. As you can see, this is like a larger than eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Um, so you can have plenty of pieces of paper essentially in here. Um, if you were to save this or print it, what you'll see is just what's on the white page and not what's outside of it. Um, but plenty of times in Illustrator am I like drawing and painting and like illustrating things completely outside or off of the page. Um, I think even this other example that I just showed you doesn't even have an example of the artwork on the main pages. Like this is what it looks like when you open it up if you're trying to print something. It's just some coordinates and like explanation of what how things are measured in Illustrator. Um, but I have all this content sort of in the background space, which is kind of interesting. Um, so if we go back to the basics of Illustrator, let me show you how to make uh, an artboard, an additional artboard. There's an artboard tool for it, the hotkey for this one, if you're a note taker and want to just list this out somewhere so you can remember it again, uh, higher detail for later is Shift O. So Shift O is the hotkey for the artboard tool in Illustrator, if that's something you're interested in learning, you can write that down. I also want to draw your attention just to this little button that's in the top center of our artboard. So our artboard tool can do quite a lot of stuff. So we can actually resize the artboard. So you can see here, I can sort of like change the size of the page. Now I'm sort of just arbitrarily dragging it around to choose a size, which is helpful if all you want to do is have a bigger space, you know, to draw in. We can also choose a particular height and width. So if you see here that I want this to be in a particular height and width, here is height and width. And I'm going to zoom in if you can see my screen. If you're here physically, I don't know if you can see me zooming in on the zoom. But here you can see like the height and width. So I think this right now is set to pixels. It says PX at the end. What I could do to change this if I wanted it a physical dimension is I just type in. I can also change the scale based on like math if you want to. So Illustrator can even do math for you. Uh, for instance, if I wanted this to be like an 11 width page, but I also wanted two pages that were 11 wide, I know that the two, you know, 11 times two is 22, but I could do times two by hitting asterisk two. And then when I leave this box, it'll do the math for me. So that made that 22. Now I want to change this from pixels to inches. So I can just type in IN and then it'll convert that to whatever system that it's set in. So if I want this to be 11 multiplied by two or 11 plus 11, for instance, I can do that. Just type that in 11 plus 11, type in inches and it will get me to that dimension. So right now my document is set up in this case for pixels. Totally doesn't matter if you start with inches or pixels when you're setting up your document. So these are fun things you can do. I'm just gonna be arbitrary with it for the scale because I'm just trying to give some examples, but you can prep an actual document size if you'd like to. Again, shift O to select the art artboard tool. I can make a copy of any of my artboards by holding down the option key and clicking and dragging. If I click and drag, just like you're gonna make an ob a copy of an object, you can copy the whole page. It's just telling me that anything that's hidden or locked on the page won't be copied. So I may have some locked objects. Yep, looks like I got some, a couple locked objects in a different layer. That's okay, we'll get there in just a minute. So shift O to be able to change the artboard tool. Go back before I did that. Command Z a couple times, Control Z if you're on a PC. So Shift O, I'm gonna hold on the Option key, click and drag. If for some reason I didn't want the objects to also be included, you know, I could just delete them. So that's one way to get rid of them, no problem. Just drag, select over everything and hit delete. Um, I could also duplicate the page without dragging the objects on it. And so that would be a shift O. There's a little tiny button in the center of the screen. This one, if you hover over it, it says move slash copy artboard artwork with artboard. And this is turned on at the moment, which means it will also copy the artwork along with the artboard. If I unturn this on or sort of deselect it there, you can see it's now deselected. This will now make a duplicate copy of the artboard without moving the artwork. 
So if I zoom back out here, I can click and drag, hold down the option key, and it'll just make a copy that way. You can also, if you want to, just click and drag to make a new you know, artboard space with this artboard tool. And it can be any shape you want, really. Um, you know, if you were making something that was needed to be a physical size for a print, uh, you might want to make it the size of the print. But if you're just making space for you to work in digitally, you can really make it any size that you want. So this is going to be my playground for now. We'll just kind of start there. Uh, one of the things that I did want to mention, especially if you're starting on paper, is for us to make a copy of this idea. So this I'm sure you've seen in a physical way, uh, probably like a little handwriting thing from, I don't know, kindergarten or something. You may have seen pages like this. So I believe we made these last class. I want to refresh your memory on how to do that. Um, you can also start a new layer, which is helpful with this. So to do that, you want to find the layers panel. If you can't find the layers panel, you can go to the window menu and then scroll down. All of these are different panels. They're all in mostly alphabetical order. That's from the window menu. So if anything you can't find, like the color palettes or um, you know, artboards tab, you can go through and organize your artboards. You can also organize your layers. Um, the navigator is sometimes helpful. We'll probably talk about Pathfinder at one point. We'll definitely look at different stroke options here soon. So um, there's even type in here if you wanted to get into different fonts, and we'll get there. So there's all kinds of fun things that you can find in this. We want to find the layers panel just to talk about that. Now, the reason we might use different layers is so we can lock something. So if I know that this is the scale that I want to try drawing my lettering, in, and you know what, I might actually work very largely today just to give me an opportunity to kind of have a wide kind of letter form. But I can make duplicate copies of these shapes if I want to. The way I made these, if you recall from last time, is we used our line segment tool. The line segment tool, the hot key is the backslash. It's right above the return key if you're interested in using that tool. And this one works essentially just how you would expect drawing a line to work. You just click and drag. And it's just going to draw a line between the two spots that you start holding, you know, clicking and dragging in and wherever you stop. If you also hold shift, if you can tell here, I'm just like holding shift and then letting go of shift, holding shift, letting go of shift, it will constrain it to a straight line when you click and drag and draw with it. So you then can make a straight line, which is a fairly easy way to do that. Uh, and now I can actually, I can make a duplicate copy of this line if I click and drag right on the line, or I could just draw another line that's straight line with my line segment tool. Either way, perfectly works fine to be able to set up for myself. What we're setting up here is a baseline and an, a cap height. So I will name these baseline just so you can see them, what we're trying to create here for our lettering. And this is gonna be our cap height. And these are on, generally speaking, the sort of the basic tools that you want to be aware of when we're creating sort of our spaces here. This dashed line in the center, I believe we just barely looked at it towards the end of class last time of how to create one of these. This is the X height. And I do want to show you how you can create this line as well to create a dashed line in Illustrator, if that's helpful to you. Now, remember, we also talked about that the, the X height is not necessarily always in the center. It can be, but it actually can be offset as well. Do you want your lowercase letters to be slightly taller or do you want your cap heights, you know, the, the height of your capital letters to be very, very tall in comparison to your lowercase letters. This can move that where this is inside of your uh, baseline and cap height can be very sort of subjective based on the font that, or the lettering style that you're looking to create. Um, what this means is this is an opportunity to be creative. What this also means is that, um, you know, you can get different results based on how you change where that location is, because this will change your process. So there's an opportunity here to be creative, which I think is awesome. So you could choose that if you would like. Um, you know, the distance between the cap height and the baseline is also something you could be creative with. But how do we change one of these lines to be dashed? So let's do that really quickly. This is going to be another panel. Oh, sorry, I didn't talk about the layers panel. The layers panel, the way you want to make a new layer, there's a little button. There's some buttons at the bottom of this panel. The two that you probably want to pay attention to are the plus sign or the trash can. So if you want to delete something, you can select a whole layer and just delete the whole thing by hitting the trash can icon at the bottom of that panel. There's also a little square uh, with a little plus sign that's going to create a new layer. Those are pretty much all that you need to know that's inside that panel. You can double click on the lettering at any time if you want to change the name. So if I know that this layer here 
is where I've been making all of my guides. These are my guides for my cap height, baseline, X height, those kinds of things. I can name this layer. These are sort of my guides for lettering. And the advantage of being able to make a separate layer for my guides and lettering is that I can go in, I could turn this eye on and off. So there's a little tiny eye next to that layer. Right next to that layer where that eye is, there's also an empty box where you can see if I hover over, it gives me an indication that I can toggle a lock. This will allow me to lock that layer. So I don't actually draw on that layer. This is a really smart way to work so that you can separate your guides from your lettering. There may be a point at which you get when you're working on your lettering that you need to see what the letters look like without the lines there. So it's just easy to turn those off. I mean, that's just a practical choice. You can also make sure that you don't accidentally move your letter, your, your or excuse me, your lines. So that if you move that baseline around, that's gonna change where the base of your letters sit. So if it accidentally moves just even a little bit, that can mess up where your letters sit in that space. And you don't wanna do that, right? So um, you can lock that layer as well. And then what I'll do is create another layer that's on top of that layer. This one is the guides for lettering. And this letter, this layer will be where I do my lettering art. So that'll actually be a separate piece there. So, you know, what we've done from last class, I could even turn that on and off so that that's all invisible. Uh, so everything can be separated in a layer if you want to. Now you can get crazy with it and separate everything out of a different layer. You could do a different layer for every individual letter if you wanted to. You don't have to do that so much, really. It really, if you just separate your guides from the letters, from the forms that you want to make, that would be plenty. That would be enough. So I suggest that that's all within the layers panel. Uh, interrupt me if I'm going too fast, by the way. I'm just going to keep going, trucking along, you know, like y'all are picking up everything just fine. So just holler at me if any, if any questions come up. I'm going to unlock the layer for my guides for lettering because I want to make sure you know how to make a dashed line if that's something that you'd like to include. Um, I'm just going to make another copy of one of these lines. And again, the two ways that we drew that was with the line segment tool or making a copy of a line that already exists. So I'm just going to click and drag on that line while holding down the option or the alt key to make a copy. Option or alt key. And I am going to try to make sure I'm telling you, you know, as many uh, hot keys as I can, because that'll make your workflow faster. Right. I mean, the whole point of this is so that we know how to do a particular job. So we can get paid to do that job. And if you can be efficient and work quickly, then you can get paid more. So uh, the way we wanna do this to be able to make a dashed line is you wanna go to your Windows panel one more time and open up a panel called the stroke panel. And I believe we introduced this last class. There's some opportunities to mess around with stroke here that we'll play around with. Um, all of these panels, by the way, can be moved. So if I don't like the placement of where this is, right here, here's the stroke panel. I can actually click and drag on the word stroke and just choose where that panel goes to. If I want it to snap back or go back to be a part of the other panels that are available there, I can just click and drag again on the word stroke and then just drag that over until I start seeing these blue lines pop up. So I can make this panel really visible by just dragging it out and making sure that you can see that. And I'm gonna do that first. There's also a space right here. If you don't see this space, sometimes the stroke options look like this when you first open it up. Is anyone on Illustrator sort of following along? Try opening up your stroke panel real quick, if you don't mind, and let me know if it looks like this. And if you're on Zoom and following along, you can do the same thing. Just give me a nod or an emoji or a yes if your stroke panel kind of looks like that, yeah. Okay, this is usually how it starts. And there's actually so many more options for a stroke panel, and I'm not really sure why they would hide options from you. I think that's silly. Uh, but there are hidden options here. So just so you know how to get into those, if you focus on this stroke panel here, there's a four little lines in the corner. Do you see those four little lines? That is an indication or trying to be an icon that's representative of the idea of having a drop-down menu. So when you click that, there should be only one option, which is to show options. Like, why would you just not show the options in the first place? I have no idea, but there you go. You wanna click that little tiny box and click show options. And that will open up the panel so you can see so many more opportunities for being able to refine and choose what your line shape is. And that's super useful. We're, we're gonna be using line quite a bit today when we're introducing some of these more complex tools to be able to draw or illustrate with. So to be able to find those options, then you can click that dashed line feature. Um, the standard dashed line is, I think it's remembering whatever dash setting I had before, uh, but you can set up this dash. The dash size is gonna be the width of that line. So if I make this five, it will be super tiny little dots, as you can see there. So like I could fine tune this dash line however I like. I mean, honestly, you can create some really beautiful dash lines this way. It could be an art feature all by itself. 
you can't have multiple dashes and gaps. So if I do 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 for all those, you're going to get some really interesting line dashes, right? Sort of looking like Morris code there, which is neat. Some of the other options which are in here, and we'll get into those more, is the different kinds of caps that you want. So if you were to choose round caps, that can give you a different view of those lines, usually at the ends. Oops, I need to make sure I have a line selected if I'm going to change them. There we go. So rounded caps, so it'd be different than square ends. So there's some fun different options there. You can round your corners a little bit more. You can choose where the alignment of the dashes are. So there's some fun options in here. There's even like arrowheads you could put on these. So if you want it to have like, I don't know, I think there's even like a hands in here, right? There you go. Some like illustrated hands. So there's fun stuff. I mean, this is fun stuff. You can just like click. This, I wouldn't say this is like creative work necessarily. This is just like clicking options, right? We're just sort of like picking from a drop down menu, but that's fun. I mean, there's some fun stuff in there. I'm going to ignore these because it really don't, doesn't matter too much today. We're going to get into lettering. I'm not really sure if I want it to look like an arrow, but that could be a fast way to make it look like an arrow, just in case. Cool. So there's my, my sort of first dashed line option. Again, just to recap navigation, I'm zooming a lot. I zoom in and out quite a bit. Um, to move my screen around, I'm holding down the space bar and clicking and dragging with the, to get that hand icon to show up. You just hold space bar and that hand tool gets just temporarily selected so you can move yourself or your view around. You can zoom in and zoom out. I think if you like on a trackpad and pinch, pinch your fingers in or pinch your fingers out to zoom in and out that way. Um, the Z key is the zoom tool, just to refresh. So I'll leave the stroke options open just for a minute, but let's talk about a few different things that we can do to actually create letter forms. I'm gonna delete some of these extra dash features. I really don't need them. Let's do like 50 and 50. Okay. Um, another useful thing before I switch layers here would be to be able to make these a little less bold, I would say. Do you see how this is sort of just black outlines uh, on kind of a, a white background. So it's very high contrast. Um, if I wanted these lines to be a little bit less obvious, so I can see a little bit more of kind of my uh, line quality here, what I might do is I'll make a third copy here because I want to have three of these to kind of play around with. I might shrink this all just a tiny bit so it fits on a page better. Just drag selecting all of, her, all of these objects and then clicking on any one of them will move everything all at the same time useful stuff, uh, but I wanna be able to make these a little bit harder to see. And there's a couple of different ways we could do that. One of the ways we could do that is to just change the color of the line. So we can change the color of the line right here. If I just select one of the lines I wanna change the color of, or all the lines that I wanna change the color of, you can see that they all have a similar black outline, sort of just, just black stroke, we would say. You can see here when I hover over this panel too, a little explanation box pops up. It's telling you this is the fill and stroke information. So you can see what that looks like and how it functions. Essentially, what is the color of the outline around the shape, whatever the shape is? And what is the interior color of that shape? That would be the fill. Now, since these are lines, there's gonna be no fill, but I could double click on this square to be able to choose a different color. One color that might be easier to sort of see through in a perspective would be choose a lighter gray color. So that will fade back out into the background so much more. So that's one way to sort of fade your line work is to choose a different color. If you're working in Photoshop or Procreate today, I encourage you very much to make a new layer in whatever system you're drawing in and go ahead and draw some of those straight lines for yourself. If you're working physically, draw those straight lines for yourself with the ruler so that you can sort of give yourself some space to practice creating the letter forms that you're looking to create. So whatever tool you're working in today, go ahead and just make those lines. And I'll continue showing you a few different processes of ways that you can change the color of those lines. I might also change the color of this text that I put on here just so that it's faded into the background as well. I don't really need it to be so high contrast. It's gonna be distracting from my lettering. So I may also, these, these letters are filled in, they're not outlined, so I'm doing those separate. But you can see that fill color is right there. I just need to double click on that fill color to change the color again. And then I'll choose something that's like almost white, you know, just sort of like an off white. So it blends into the background and becomes somewhat invisible, which is nice. So there I have kind of my basic starting place of I have my line work. You know, I can stretch that line work out to be a little bit wider if I want to, to fill a little bit more space. Just drag selecting over multiple shapes will give you the option to move things around or stretch or pull those things. So there's some opportunities. 
to kind of fine tune what we're looking at. All right, let's talk about a few different processes that we might go through to make some lettering. Now, generally speaking, if you're working on paper, what you may find is that you work first with sort of defining where your letters exist. Um, for instance, if you know how many of you have written something and you ran out of space on the side of that page and had to make like the letters squished at the end, how many of you have done that before? I've totally done that. It happens all the time. This is one of those times where you can, I mean, if you're working digitally, you can just move the letters around and rescale everything and fit things differently and proportionally. What you might think about doing is if you're working physically is to be able to identify about the general space where you want all of your letters to go. Um, I could do that with little dots with a brush pen or a brush stroke. You could write tiny letters or versions of the letters. You could also draw or write the insides of the letters. And what we mean by the insides is, what is the shape of the letter T? This is sort of the letter T. So that's just sort of writing the letter T, right? You just do two lines to be able to represent the letter T. Where is that letter T space going to go? That could be where you choose to put the letter T. Um, my next suggestion with is, if the word starts with the letter T, what's the letter that it ends with? Go now, don't think about writing the word in order, right in, in composition. So if we start off on this side of the, of the page, I know that I eventually need to also end on like an E for instance, I need to make sure that I know where that E is going to go. So if you then start with the last letter or do the last letter second rather, you're gonna know that you're giving the word or that space for that letter enough space to exist. So it can like be in that space. So now I can sort of plan out where are the additional letters going to go? How do I fit those in? So if you move towards the center when you're plotting out where those compositional space is in, you can avoid accidentally running out of space. Now this is, this is sort of an example that I'm showing you digitally, something that's valuable to do on paper because you can sort of like plan out where your letters are gonna exist. So if I know there's gonna be 12 letters here, I might need to make sure that some of these letterings fit in in that space. And I could do that by just making sure that I'm getting the general space that I needed so maybe the next letter in the series is like an H or something, making sure I'm getting enough space for that H to exist in a similar scale or size, but also making sure that it's, you know, not invading another letter space or becoming a different scale or size to fit in on the page. So that's useful. Go ahead and plan out where your letters are going to go. Um, the word that I'm working with, I believe, if I remember right, was uh, reread or something of that nature. I had a few different versions of the word. Reread light or something like that. Reread re light gain, I'm not sure. So if reread is what I wanna start with, I know that these are the letters. I might go ahead and just type the word somewhere so I know what the forms look like. Reread. And I'll make that a little bit bigger. Get that on my space. Oops, I didn't look like it typed at all. Reread. Reread gain. So I'll write out a few versions of my lettering. This is also an opportunity for you to proofread. Another version. Red light gain. Gain a red light. Got a bonus light. Bonus reread. I don't know. These are some of my ideas that I'll play around with today. Kind of like red light game. That one sounds fun. Got yourself a bonus red light. Okay, so I've gotten those written now. I can count the letters. Counting the letters is useful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve here. I can see also the order that they go in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to twelve. That gives me a good indication of kind of how I want to structure these writing. Again, if I don't really have to worry about digital spaces because I could always scale everything down or make a duplicate copy and move it around, all kinds of fun stuff. But highly recommend doing this on paper first.
if you're working on paper today. And I see there are several of you working on paper. So I just want to make sure you're sort of thinking about what that step of the process might be. All right, so we went over last class a couple different ways that we could draw things. And I sort of demoed a little bit of a way that you could make shapes with the pencil tool and edit them. Um, it's not that you're particular with the types of tools that you use. It's not that we're trying to like do the whole thing in pencil or do the whole thing in brush or do the whole thing with the pen tool. I'm hoping that you get comfortable with all of these tools with enough to be able to jump back and forth between them. So if I know that I start by drawing something with a pencil tool, if I know that I'm gonna start with the letter R and I sort of just draw a line, this will be my loop for the R, it's gonna come down something like this. That would be sort of the basics of my letter R. I could say, oh, you know what? I don't really want this to kick out to be such a harsh edge here. Again, I can redraw this by just clicking and dragging along the line and I could curve that end. So there's some advantages of working digitally is that I can make really live changes to this, which gives me an opportunity to be nice and sort of expressive with my former shape. What I also recommend with this is that you make copies every time you wanna make a change. So if I know that this is a letter that I'm gonna be working on, I'm trying to judge the distance and the space. This probably needs to be a little bit larger so it hits that baseline. Um, I might need to make the loop a little bit taller here maybe, or a little bit wider. So I might just try that and I'll follow this form here. And I'm just doing this with the trackpad on my laptop. You know, that's a different form of the letter. I actually rather like that, that's fun. So you can mess around with this continuously. One way to work, pencil tool. Now, once you get very good, you can tell that there's a certain point when I'm using the pencil tool where it really is dependent on my hand. And the problem with depending on my hand is that, you know, I may not have already put in the 10,000 hours it takes to learn how to draw perfectly, you know, letter forms. You know, it may be that it's getting wiggly. You guys see this one? That's kind of like a wiggly example. I could probably try to redraw this a few times to get it straighter. And you know, maybe each time it will be a little bit straighter, a little bit straighter. If you recall, also I can double click on the tool to set it closer to the smooth option, which will like do some of the work of removing some of that hand wiggle in there. But at a certain point, every time I'm clicking and dragging, here's another, here's a good example. I just added a notch in there. Do you see that? Like that's a mistake. I don't want that in there. I want it to be, you know, left out of that. And so one of the ways that we do this after I've already drawn the lettering is to go in and actually edit the individual points. And I know we jumped into and started talking. Some of you remember we started talking about the direct selection tool a little bit last class. Do you guys remember that just a little bit? I see a few nods. Yep, thumbs. Thank you so much. Um, essentially, what I can do with these is move these points around, right? So if I know that this point needs to go here, what I can also do is subtract points. I can tell here that I want this to be really just kind of like a straight line here. I don't need these extra little points in here. So I'm gonna select my pen tool, which is P on my keyboard and just use that little minus feature to subtract some points. And I'm being specific about the points that I'm subtracting by hitting that pen, that pen tool, P on the keyboard and then clicking on those points to delete them. What that means then is I've got these handlebars that I can create the line with. And now I'm really being particular about this. This is a uh, more of like a building method. This is not a drawing method anymore. We're building shapes now. And I want you to notice the difference between the two. Writing shapes physically, you're writing the letter form just to communicate the meaning of the word as fast as you possibly can. Drawing the letter forms, you're drawing the volume of the letter or maybe the perimeter of the letter to try and get that form. But here you can see I'm building it. I'm choosing uh, the shape of the line as it curves around this outside edge. I can be, you know, I can choose to change it. I can make multiple copies of this. I can make these sort of like perfect swooping forms this way by clicking and dragging on these handlebars to try and get those to, to participate here. So there's opportunities for me to change and edit the form of the letter itself through the use of these little tiny points. I'll make another copy here since I made some edits. This is a great way to start, by the way. It's not even that I'm making the entire word. I'm actually just starting with a single letter, making a few different copies of that. Here I can see I've got a bunch of points in here. And actually, this is a pretty decently drawn loop, and I did an OK job with it. But if you can see where those points are, there's way more points that I need. 
And I know that there's more points than I need because I'm familiar with how Illustrator draws a sphere or a circle. So let's take a look at how Illustrator draws a circle with the circle tool. Circle tool here, the hotkey I believe is E for an ellipse or L, I'm sorry, L. L for the shape tools, ellipse L. I guess E is an eraser. So I can draw a perfect circle. You can click and drag to draw a circle. If you hold shift, it will constrain it to its proportions there. And then I just want to look at these handlebars. Do you guys see the handlebar construction? Do you see how they both, there's two handlebars on this one curve here. They both go about 50% of the way away from their point or so, maybe a little bit less than the distance, the full 50% distance there. So you can see that they create an entire perfect circle out of just four points. Do you see those? So I know that if I wanna get this full circle curvature that Illustrator set up to be able to make a perfect round curvature with just really three points. So I wanna try and reduce the number of points that I have in my illustration shape as best I can. And I can do that a couple different ways. If I use my pen tool, do you see how I can subtract these points? You see also how it's almost like erasing some of that line because those points don't exist. So there's an extra little quick functional tool that's in here. And let me see if I can remember how to do it. You see how that one completely changed the shape of the, that letter form, right? I wanna keep the curve, that shape that's there, but I wanna subtract the number of points that are used to create it. So if I go to my pen tool, this is a quick little tip inside the pen tool. You can click and hold down the button on your pen tool on the tool itself and get just the minus tool. This is something that only works if you're selecting the minus tool version of the pen tool. It doesn't work if you use the standard pen tool. So if I click and hold down the tool or click and hold down the button on the pen tool itself, right? My tools are on the left-hand side. I can then select that delete anchor point. When I do that and then I hold shift, I think, yep, shift. If while I'm using my subtraction minus tool, I'm gonna zoom in for those of you that are here physically, you should be able to see a little bit better on my screen. Do you see here that if I hold shift, nothing changes. There's no like indication change that the tool is doing anything different. I'm holding shift down. But watch what happens when I subtract this point. Do you see that line didn't move? So it's remembering the location, but it's subtracting that point and then removing that point so it's not part of that line shape. So two different ways to use the pen tool again to get perfect form. If I use the regular pen tool and just hover over a point and subtract, I'm gonna to have to do the work of redrawing the entire loop. If I go to my tools panel, this is just one of those weird little things in Illustrator, go to my tools panel, find the pen tool, select the delete anchor point tool. The hotkey for this one is actually just the minus key. And then hold shift. When I deselect those points or subtract them, that whole line doesn't move at all. It just adds in the length of those handlebars. Highly recommend putting that into your notes. It is a super useful thing. You can't find that anywhere on the internet. Um, although someone found it on the internet at one point. But now I have control here where I can change the curvature of the loop. So pretty awesome. So what is the shape or form that I want it to have? Oh, let me tell you the little hotkeys for being able to do this. Or should I, can I give you a second to write that down? Just the notes for that little pen tool. If you wanna like notate that somewhere. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to go too fast. So the difference was, do you want the curve to stay where it is or do you want the curve to just delete itself? The line is still connected, right? The line's connected either way you do it. It's just, if you wanna keep that curvature. How are we doing so far? Oh gosh, I need to plug in my computer. I'm at 13%. Any questions about anything we've gone over so far? I'll get my power cord out. Don't worry, we're going to get into some more fun tools here real soon. Okay. 
And if someone wants to just um, shout at me, if we get to about 11.30 or 11.40 even, uh, and I haven't given you a break yet, just let me know. We'll go ahead and take a break at that point. Okay, let's keep going. So essentially, I wanna be able to manipulate these points. Again, I'm doing most of this with my white arrow tool, the direct selection tool. The hotkey for that one is A on your keyboard versus V, which is the black arrow tool, the direct selection tool, the one that selects the whole object versus selecting individual points. So V on your keyboard is sort of your default home base move objects around tool. I use the V key all the time to switch to that tool. The hotkey for the direct selection tool to manipulate points, the hotkey for that one is A. I use that all the time as well. So I'm almost never, if I can avoid taking the time to drag my mouse or like move my finger over to the tools themselves, I try to avoid doing that work because it slows everything down. So I don't want that to happen too much. Um, so I'm using my direct selection tool, A on your keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag on the handlebars to manipulate the handlebar and sort of change the length or width of this. I'm going to do this really kind of quickly at first, but then give you an opportunity to sort of play around with these. And we'll have some opportunity to practice. But you see there's two different things that I can click on here. I could click on the handlebar, but the handlebar, when I click the handlebar, that just changes how sort of wiggly this line is. Right, you can give it different shapes. That's kind of a fun shape right there. That kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a little candle flame or something. So there's some fun shapes that you can get out of this. Does that look like a candle flame? I feel like that looks like a candle flame. It's kind of fun. So the handlebar can be one thing. I can also click on the point to move the point. Now, when I'm moving the point, the handlebars don't move. And when I'm moving the handlebars, the point doesn't move, right? So there's sort of two of those things locked in. I can do this faster, however. So I want to show you how you can do this faster. If while I'm clicking and dragging on a handlebar here, and just watch this with me if you don't mind. And I'll give you an opportunity to practice this. The handlebar itself can move. If I stop, yeah, I'm still clicking and dragging this whole time. If I start holding down the space bar, what happens is it locks those handlebars into place, but now I can move the point around. So if you want to move quickly with this, right? I don't want to have to like do multiple steps to be able to do this. I can do this all at once. Click and drag to move the handlebar and then move, hold down space bar and you can move the point. And then when you let go of space bar, you get the opportunity to move those handlebars again. So this gives me an opportunity to be really kind of like choosy about where I put my points. Like this one might need to move over this way a little bit if I wanted it to, and I can pull this handlebar up a little bit. And so we're gonna practice this. So if you don't mind, let's try this together. I'm gonna pause the recording here while we're working. So let me jump into Zoom here and I'll hit the pause button for the record. And resume record. Okay, so that extra little feature that we just showed here is that the handlebars are linked, they're connected. Using your direct selection tool, the hotkey is A. I can hold on the option key to de-connect them or, or unlink them. Now, for some reason they are unlinked and you would like them to be linked again, you can do this part of the process as well. I will actually find my pen tool, which is P. I will then hold down the option or alt key again and then click and drag on the point. And clicking and dragging on the point will now recreate both handlebars, but they will now be linked. And that is good if you want to have consistent momentum with your line work. Right, it sort of has a consistent swoop now because both of those are coming in and out of that point consistently in the same spacing. Okay. Now I like this letter A here, so I'm gonna keep working with this one because it's starting to come together. I'll move this one over for the example. I put those little points about where I formed my points for that letter, just to signify it, just to represent it. You can also see here that I have a point where there is an opportunity to sort of loop a little bit. So if I wanted a letter A that sort of had a loop here, I could have that extension included for that letter A this way. So there's an opportunity for me to sort of fine tune the shape here, move those points around depending on what kind of angle I want. You can hold shift and select multiple points. Click on one, hold shift, click on another one to select multiples. Give me an opportunity to sort of move some of those points around all together. 
Command Z to go back a little bit if I wanted to. So I have an opportunity to mess with the handlebars. You could do that endlessly, but let's go ahead and add some different variations, some line width, some line width to this. So there's a couple different ways we can add line width. I do want to show you a line width tool that's really good at doing this. I do want to be consistent. Let me just edit this just a little bit. I want to be consistent about where that curvature of the A extends down to. So I'm trying to be particular about the shape of my form here, the shape of the letter itself. So let's look at the line width tool. So now I have this one and I've sort of edited it a little bit. I started off by drawing with the pencil tool, edited it with the points, went in with the individual points with my direct selection tool, edited the curvature of those points there. You know, some of them could be broken that could give it a different character. Like this could still look like a letter A, but that looks kind of interesting and cool. All right, line width tool is shift W. The hotkey is shift W. And if you just want to watch my screen just for a minute, I'll give you an opportunity to practice this one. This one is really useful. Now, of course, we could start off first before we even use this tool by choosing our consistent thinness. So like the thinnest thin. And we can do that with our stroke panel, right? So we've done this with our stroke panel already, essentially. I can choose the line width here. So I can increase the line width this way and just get a consistency that I like for my thinnest areas or my thickest areas. If you're interested in making monoline typography, do you guys remember the artist that I showed you that did monoline typography? His name was uh, Ricardo Gonzalez. Uh, he uh, goes by the Instagram handle, It's a Living. Do you guys remember who I was talking about? Mm -hmm. Stuff's so cool. But I could essentially just sort of increase the line width here if I wanted to get it to that it's starting to, to give it a little bit of a consistent here. Um, you can see that now that this line is thicker, you can probably identify a few places where there's a little wiggle in there. Um, I just corrected this. You can see it should be nice and round bowl in the front of this. It kind of like thins out right here. And so to correct that, you can still have access to all your little tiny little points that are inside the system to try and give it maybe a little bit of a more bold roundness. I also really love this little extension on the letter A. So I could really play around where this one sits. You know, if I wanted it to go way down here, sort of saying, hey, this whole loop is like full part of this kind of process of creating the letter form. So I could have a lot of fun characterization just playing around with this. Um, one thing that you can do and change in here is my end cap. So I could make those round. So that would be a nice little feature. That's also something that I think you can remember from the example of Ricardo Gonzalez's work. Uh, really, really nice feature with that. So you could add in those end caps and we go back to, I like that placement really, really nicely there. And then this one, because this one goes in a different direction, do you see how that one is not part of the end caps? The end caps are just the two end points. This one, I do want it to round and that's gonna be something that's here, right here, that second option, that round joint. So that gives you an option to choose those roundness. So that's a nice way to start, right? You get some nice round forms there. Now, to be able to customize this a little bit, get closer to a more calligraphic type letter form, it may be useful. Do I have two points here? Is that a handlebar? Okay, cool, it's just a handlebar. Um, one thing that would be nice with this is if I can get a little bit more control over where the thick and thin areas are. And that's what this next tool is that I'm gonna show you. And that is the line width tool. So what's nice is I can kind of change the form here, but let's go ahead and take a look at the line width. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new line with this example in this sheet here. I'll just move that letter A down. So it sits on the baseline in a similar placement. And let's talk about line width tool, shape width tool. Uh, that is the shift W. So here's a little demonstration of what that tool looks like. You essentially can follow along the line. We are adding a different kind of point to interact with. And in fact, these will only be things that we can interact with when we are interacting with the same shape and using the line, the line width tool, the width tool. You can actually entirely illustrate silhouettes with this too, and I'll show you that here in a minute. It's really fun to play around with. So I'd encourage you to try this tool if you are playing around in Illustrator today. So the, the line width tool allows me to just select that tool. You can see now when I'm hovering over the lines of this letter form that I cannot see the points that were there before, right? So those points are gone. But what I can do is click and drag anywhere on the line itself. You know, anywhere that I click and drag with the line will allow me to change the width of that line. So this is sort of a way to custom change the width of that line work, which is really fascinating. I know that this section here is going to be a little bit of a downstroke, so I might increase the width of that a little bit. Or if I know this is as wide as I ever want it to be, I just need to worry about my thinnesses. So remember, we chose maybe the thickest areas first. 
how thin should those thin areas be? Well, we can sort of say, this would be about where we want that letter to transition to a thin stroke. And then I can go over here to where its widest point should be for that downstroke, maybe right about there and increase the line width there. I also probably want it to start thinning out over here where that upstroke is. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose over here and we'll just thin that out a little bit more, get closer to that consistent thinness. And now I'm starting to create a letter form that is giving me a little bit more of that calligraphic feel to it. Now, if you're working physically, right, you can just sort of control the line width of your lines by going back over them with a similar drawing tool. You can sort of say, well, I want this to be thicker or thinner on this side and just color a little bit more or shade in a little bit more, paint in a little bit more, whatever your tool is that you're using. That's a good thing to do. I do want you to draw the letters, not just write them. But this line width tool in Illustrator is super useful as a process. So I know here, maybe right here, this line needs to be a little bit thicker because this is a downstroke. So I'll increase the width there. A couple tips with this before I let you guys just play around for a few minutes is you can move these around. So if you don't have them in the right spot, that center point is where the placement of that, that sort of point is, you can move that along the line. It will not move past another point. So if there's another spot where you've changed the line width, you can see up there, it's gonna prevent me from going further past that. But I can drag this all along the line until I get to that next point. So if I know that my thickness is right about here where I want my sort of thickest point to be for that downstroke there at the beginning of the A, I can also choose if I want it to go to more towards the outside or more towards the inside. Right now they're both linked when I'm moving them together. If I hold down the option key, it will only do one side at a time. This is giving you a lot of freedom to sort of control and change the shape of that letter form. So if I wanna go in and sort of say, oh, I want this to be thicker, but only on the outside. I don't want it to like manipulate the inside of that uh, counter space, we would call it. We call that a counter space. It's sort of the interior of the letter. So that will give you an opportunity to fine tune this a little bit further. So you can move those points around. I think if you hit the delete button, it will delete one of those points. So if you click and drag as if you're gonna move the point around first and then choose to hit the delete or backspace button, it will just delete that line width point that's been added in there. So I could potentially start fresh delete all of those. So I know this is a downstroke. I want this to be thicker here, thinner as it goes upward. Should start to thicken up again as it comes back down. Thin out a little bit as it gets closer to the baseline. And there should be some variation on top of each other here where I can see that my line thickness is thicker for a downstroke. It should thin out again as it gets closer to the top here. Please let me know if you have any questions about this process as we're going through it. This is a pretty great process for being able to get some variation in your line width. Again, this would be an opportunity to really think about how few, what's the fewest number of changes in width that you can, you can create here. It will get kind of overwhelming if you start adding in a ton of these all over the place. So try to use the fewest number that you can. The other challenge is, and again, I started off with about as thick as I ever want it to get, about, this, about the thickness that I wanted it to have. So when I'm going in and adding in these little line width changes, I'm really trying to focus on the consistency of how thin I make them. So if my thinnest area is here, it should be consistent thin area on this side. And the same thing goes if you're drawing this physically, if you're working in a physical space, you wanna try and be as consistent as you can with the thickness, how thick are the thickest areas and how thin are the thinnest areas. So I'll try to con conform to that space. And since this letter is going to be a letter A that's going to connect to another letter in my word, 
I'm going to make sure that is kind of like a thin area there as we're going through. That take off. No worries. Do what you got to do. Have a good day. I'll see you Wednesday. All right. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time to see if you can play around with that. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here. We'll come back. Thank you again for the reminder to resume recording. So if I'm jumping into my pen tool, let me just show you how I might draw this. Click once to start my pen tool. If I know that I want it to be a letter L that sort of loops, well, I don't need lots of points along this edge to get it to loop, right? This would be the wrong way to draw. Well, there's no wrong way to draw, but it would be a less fluid way to draw, right? Because it sort of has so many points to deal with, makes it kind of look jagged. If instead I just draw one single point at the very bottom, one point, I can then click and drag at the top to get that curvature that I want. And then sort of click and drag back at the bottom to get the curvature that I want the other direction. And then just end. So there's like a whole L with just four points. Then the challenge is to then just go back through and kind of fine tune and edit my loop so it's very consistent, has a nice angle. You know, does it have a good amount of space at the end of the ligature so it can connect to another letter? Right, we're doing individual letters first. You can always make sure that the lines of the letters eventually overlap each other, but this will give me an opportunity. So there I've drawn it in four points with the pen tool, right? Clicking and dragging to be very careful about where I put those points. Whereas here I have pencil tool. I've got too many points. I'm going to use my subtraction hotkey, hold down the shift key, and just go ahead and subtract a few of these points that I don't need. Probably like that. There's one, two, three, four, five you know that's that's much easier to use and once you have the fewest number of points that you can to make this it will make editing the shape and the form so much easier to do and then you can worry about shape width so i think that's a good process for you if you're starting in a digital space yeah question go ahead John. if there's like a, a handlebar missing like there's only one handlebar how yeah do you great Sure, sure. Excellent question, Tony. Thank you so much for asking that. So Tony's question is here is, I have one handlebar, and this is a great line to show you the example of, I have one handlebar, but not two, because I actually clicked to start when I drew my pen tool. I just clicked to start, which means there's no handlebar on that point. How do we get a handlebar back? Probably the fastest way to make sure you have two handlebars on every line is select your pen tool. I'm going to hold down the option key, which turns it into this carrot. This sort of, we call this a chevron or a carrot shape. There's also a tool, the anchor point tool will allow you to do that. Anchor point tool, hold down the option key, click and drag on the line. And now you can see that other handlebar starting to pop out. And now I can start editing. Excellent question, dude. Thank you so much for asking that. Yeah, yeah, very good question. So yep, you can get those handlebars that way. Um, you can also get them back on an individual point. If I also use my pen tool, hold down the option key, click and drag on any point to get those handlebars to like reconnect. So that also is a nice little feature, get those handlebars to reconnect to each other. You can also single click on any point if you want to get rid of both handlebars. So you can see now this is just a standard point with no handlebars. So I can make these all zigzags if I want to, to get rid of those handlebars. So that pen tool and then the option key. Or, or alt key will get you that feature so yep good question all right the other thing that we wanted to go over was the shape width tool a little bit more of the shape width tool and then we'll keep going with this um we should have taken a break we take a break do we already take a break we did take a break oh my gosh my brain all right cool so again after you've formally gotten rid of as many points as you can. This one I've been reduced to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points to try and get this R shape. Mess around with the form as much as you can. Highly, highly recommend making copies along the way. So we'll put that down in our steps. So step one, draw a single letter. Step two, delete all excess anchor points. Step three, work on letter form. Try to get a consistent momentum. Uh, try to get um, consistent uh, width of the letter, the whole letter. 
try to get um, a consistent um, height of the whole layer. Get a, you know, put it, make sure it's aligning to the baseline. These kinds of things that you can work on in step three. And then make copies to compare. You know, contrast as your work goes. I can't tell you, you know, this makes such a huge difference for me. I love to see progress as I'm working on something. You know, I find it's kind of discouraging if I don't get to see my progress. So if I know that like this is one of the letter R's that I'm thinking about, and this could be one of the letter R's I'm thinking about, but you know, let me make another copy. It's so satisfying to be able to see the variations that I come up with. Like maybe they'll make the whole thing just a little bit shorter and angle down a little bit more. I kind of like that R too. So there's an opportunity to mess around with form really well. Uh, there's an opportunity to explore a lot of things, but also to see all the work that you've done. So I highly recommend making as many copies as you can. Uh, make copies to compare and contrast. I think that's a really great way to do things. All right, and then that step four is going to be integrate the line width tool. So this will be working with the line width after you've tried to perfect your letter form. Let's work on widths. The challenge here is to try to be consistent with thinness. Is that a word? Thin, thinness? Try to be consistent with thickness. Try to be as even as you can. That will get you a very calligraphic inspired kind of letter form. So there's the steps we've gone through so far. We could probably spend a good amount of time kind of going over that. Um, and then let me just recap the line width tool. If I know this is about as thick as I want these letter forms to be, Again, I can make a copy just so I have opportunities to see progress. And then shape width tool. Choosing my thin areas. And my thicker areas. And it's not necessarily how extreme they are, it's just where the change happens. So it's not that I want the thin areas to be super, super tiny. It's that I want variation in the width. And remember, I can control the outside of that line if I want to separately with my line width tool if I hold down the Option key. There we go. It should be a downstroke, so a little bit thicker. And it should be an upstroke, so a little bit thinner. There was also a question as I was going around, and I'd love to see what you're working on if you're on Zoom here in just a minute. Uh, this piece right here, how thin can you make these? You can actually make these all the way to a tiny point. So if you want like a nice tapered line at the very end, that is a type of terminal or sort of exit of your lettering. So that's an opportunity there. You can just shrink this all the way down. It's still being controlled by the line width. You can just shrink that as sort of small as you'd like that to be. And if you want it to not get so small, so close to the end, you can sort of in, have another shape width option there. We are gonna try and use the fewest number of shape widths as you can to accomplish the line that you want because that will make the transitions much more smooth. If you need to delete one, you can click on one of the center points and then hit the backspace to delete it. Now I can keep playing around with that. And we'll just put in here, use fewest number of shape width. All right. Uh, highly recommend working one letter at a time. We'll put that here in step three. Uh, it is much more difficult to work together. Now, if you did have a few letters together, let me go ahead and draw a few letters here. How would you separate them? Let's go over how to do that. 
So here's my word red here. And this is difficult to do, right? I'm sort of using the trackpad. The trackpad is not the best sort of tool to be able to get some consistency. It's kind of inconsistent. My hand doesn't do such a great job of drawing the whole thing. So it is challenging to sort of go through and try to do an entire word this way, uh, just with the that tool. Um, now, as you can tell too, there's tons of points when you don't separate the letters. So there's sort of a, you know, a change here. Um, now, how would I separate these? How would I like split this? A couple different tips and tricks that you can do that. If I know that I wanna separate right about here where this kick happens in the E, that sort of like angle changes, I wanna be able to add three points. This is kind of the fastest way to do a cutting or on a line or a shape. You can tell I wanna cut this line right here about right here. So I'm going to add in three points. I'm going to switch to my pen tool, which is P on my keyboard. With just the default pen tool, not doing anything fancy on the keyboard, I can just click to add a point anywhere where I hover over their line and there isn't a point already. I'll add three points. I'll do one on one side, one on the other, and one in the middle of wherever I want it to cut. And then once I've done that third point in the middle, I can hit the delete button. And that will just delete whatever point I have just drawn. And that will separate the two. So now I have my letter E is separated from my letter R, and I can sort of delete that extra point at the end there. Um, if their ligatures overlap, that's all we need. We don't ever really need to have the entire word connected until we start doing some more, uh, you know, fancy design styling things or 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 um, doing effects of some kind. So now I can go in and edit that R separately from the letter E which means that the line width tool or the shape width tool that does the, the width changes is not going to affect the E all or, uh, either. I'll just do one at a time. And of course, first, the next step would be to subtract too many points here. I don't need so many points. So I'll go in and sort of subtract those and then edit them. So again, we're developing a really good process to have a lot of control, a lot of functional control to be able to adding in these shapes here. And getting some good line character out of it. So that's looking good. Now, where would I connect, disconnect this D? I would need to go in. As you can tell, this is like sort of redrawing over top of itself. And so this, this has a lot of opportunity to be cleaned up. I don't want to have to work with tons of lines that are overlapping themselves because I'll just have to edit two lines at the same time. So I'll go ahead and add where I want to, to cut, like where's the end of that letter E is right, right about here. I'll add in three points. That third point will go in the middle of the two, and then I can hit the delete button. And now I can go in point by point and sort of say, well, this is not what I need here. I even don't even need this part. This is just the part that I needed the letter D to give it that kind of consistent bowl shape. It should mirror, it kind of, it should look kind of similar to the letter A, just with a much taller stem. Sometimes the letter D is a little bit wider and I can go in and edit those points. What's nice about having separate letters as well is that you can see here my D is a little bit too close to my letter E. So now I can move that and separate the two. I know that my E needs to be a little bit down further. So it's sitting on the baseline. It's a little bit too tall. So I can shrink that down a little bit. My R is a little bit too angled, so I could move some points around if I want to make it not quite as angled, or I could try to angle my other letters to try and be consistent there. So I'll have a much better time kind of making edits if I follow that process. Those steps are helpful. If you're working physically, you're just trying to solve quite a few similar problems essentially manually, so that's something to do. All right, and as promised, we're gonna take a break from this for just a minute. You can keep working if you like. Working on this line, this could have another ligature attached to it. Continue drawing here. So it may feel this is a little bit tedious, it's not that we really want a tedious process. It's just that the tedium of the process gives you a lot of control. We're just looking for the control so you can really fine tune things. We want these to be beautiful examples. This is part of the process we can get that. Okay, let me pause the recording right there.